We're back in the office. Wanna Let's see if this works. Oh, damn it. All of his co workers were gone. What Shut did up. it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Nope. That doesn't work. I cannot go through there. I had to. I hate Mondays. That's spilled. That's too bad. That it is spilled. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No. Nope. Still not. This was not the correct way to the Shut meeting up. room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, <laughs> Stanley took the first open door on his left. Yep. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley <laughs> leapt from the platform and punched oh his death. Goodness. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can resist that. I had to check what was down there. Oh, I'm Stanley here again. To a set of two open this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. I do Perhaps not. he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. What is this? I want there. I want to go there. Right now. Fuck you. Ah! God damn it. The lounge was sublime. A work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope! Check Testo. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I want to see what happens if I jump off again. Look, Stanley, I think... But in his eagerness to prove <laughs> that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Again. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. I had to try. All of his co-workers were gone. Back what could it the mean? Office. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I can't be the only one noticing how they shorten and lengthen the office exceedingly times. Let's see if we can find a key, maybe. We can open. See if we can open a door. That would be. That would be great. Ooh. That's new. Nope. Username Access. Can I? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Let's nor did it advance the story in any way. Let's see if we can piss him off. I'm gonna see if I really can. Okay, piss him off real bad. That would be that would be great. But cabal! <laughs> Fuck the police! Come on. Speak, you piece of dirt. Ugh. Fuck, piece of Pokemon. I want to go through there. I want to see what's on the other side. I have a certain feeling I can do that later. When okay. Stanley came to a set Let's of make two him happy. open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling Talk a wave of it. disbelief, Stanley <laughs> decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. 
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his nope. boss's office. Rebel for life! This. What is this? Hi, let's say I... No. But Stanley just couldn't do it. Nope. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None Closing. of it made any logical sense. Closing. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. <laughs> for example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? What? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? Oh no, no I was starting to said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This nope. is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, fuck. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled what? that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. What? And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. What? How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. My goodness. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Oh. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice ah. not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself <gasps> too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. Okay. That this was a dream. How? So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited no. himself to wake no. up. No! He felt no! the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. No! The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. Nope. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Nope. Everything will be fine. Nope. I am okay. Open your eyes and you're still there. Thank you, sir. Oh, just what I was wanting. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. <laughs> I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> and everything went black. What? What? Shit. What? Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? <laughs> 
Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She rose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. Yep. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Yay! I guess that works as well. What? A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started, and if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. Well, that ain't happening. Holy shit! It's never the end, never the end, never the end! The end is never, never is the end. And this Pokemon. Pokemon is awesome. When Stanley Stand came awesome. to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Let's see if I can go back. I just wish to know, really, if I can go back. Come on. I cannot. That sucks. That sucks. Donkey balls. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. What? Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. Then it came back, and lingered for a minute or two. Now it's only half there. Just a kind of... But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No. I'm a rebel Stanley now. was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. Bullshit. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I find There's someone that hard you've been to neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is, is it, her? Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's a black door. Okay, that can sound less racist. More racist, I don't know. Whoa! Ah! Holy black motherfucker! Door, Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Let me okay, walk. there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. <laughs> ah! <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving... One mother? second.
I am back. Who'd want to commit their life to you? <laughs> I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Can I? Fuck you! Sorry. No! My story now. Fuck you! This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Shit! Uh. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Okay. Look at him there, ah! pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. What? No. No. No, I will not. Let me go. Can I not? I'm trying to do everything else. <sighs> I guess I have no other choice. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work <sighs> was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Hmm. And so he began to ah! fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off oh. the face of the earth. Not the this thought again. excited him terribly. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. To prepare dinner. As he wandered through Whoa! his fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. <sighs> Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. If that hits time. No. It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head he relived it again, and then again, and again, and over again. and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Uh, to tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. Whoa! How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. And good. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. Awesome. He won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Bitch. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. Look. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. 
I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. Please die. I, I do not. Fuck! I think I died.